long live the Empire. Tales of the Empire Episode 2, The Path of Anger, shows a little bit of how Morgan Elsbeth came into favor with the Empire, and more specifically, with Thrawn. And with it, we even get a little of Thrawn's music. High, eerie strings, along with the low and faraway thuds of a kick drum, enter as we see that we are far above Coruscant with the infinite city far below us as well. A distance and separation already being demonstrated in the music. The Imperial One class Star Destroyer enters the screen to let us know we aren't in the Clone Wars anymore. The low brass enter to help the Venators escort it across the outer atmosphere. As it does, the drums pick up energy as the brass continue with the same motif a second time. They're outlining a minor triad in second inversion. And while this may not seem interesting, if I take those three notes and I reorder them like this, then we actually start to hear the Imperial theme. So, it's possible that this was a way that the Kiners were alluding to an Imperial theme without giving it away in these early days of the Empire. It seems that inside, a now older Morgan is pitching her idea for the TIE Defender. Now, this was interesting since I was always under the impression that the TIE Defender was Thrawn's idea. Now, we see that it actually was Morgan's as a way to sell her sector's ability to the Empire and to gain favor with the Empire. Short, eerie string swells begin to enter. These swells and other ominous drones continue underneath for the rest of the conversation. As are many of the planets in that star system. How feasible is the production of these starships? My base of operations is on Corvus. It resides as Captain Pelion begins speaking. This is sophisticated work. And be honest, who else thought this was actually Wolf Yularen at first? As he begins speaking more directly to her, the music becomes more direct than the earlier swells, again before cutting to the title card. I see. Thank you. I have a question for you. Why is it that you want to lend your substantial talents and visions? As Morgan lands on Corvus, the strings and percussion pick up. They move forward with purpose, just like Morgan in this moment. In the background though, the harmony is supported by arpeggios and an organ, foreshadowing who is coming. Next, the string swells re-enter as she's confronted by her people. As she addresses them, a solo cello enters. This shift in the instrumentation adds more sensitivity to the music, while also making it more personal to the people. When I found your village, you were nothing. Just one. But as she continues to offend them, the other sounds consume it. Morgan's theme cuts through momentarily in the violins next. And we let you run our lives. We worked for that success. You promised us wealth. We sacrificed for you. That night, the descent has not dissipated as Morgan looks on. But as Rook lunges towards her, the music picks up energy quickly as the battle unfolds. It remains mostly in the low strings with occasional flails in the high strings as well, creating syncopated attacks. But as Morgan and Rook continue their duel, their weapons strike some sort of gong. As they strike it, the sounds cause the people to take notice. However, it became covered up slightly by the brass that entered at the same moment, so I didn't actually catch this until my second watch. But with the entrance of the brass, the energy and tension increase further. The music cuts off quickly as Morgan and Rook both go down momentarily. It returns for one last bout until Morgan defeats Rook. As she does, the music resides. 
who sent you. After proving herself to Thrawn, he reveals himself to her. As he does, his music, not quite his actual theme, but his notable music enters in the organ. Who are you? Admiral Thrawn. It continues to loop in the background as it does as he speaks to her. It seems to almost ignore other music as it enters as well, simply continuing its path forward. It only stops when Thrawn confronts Morgan with the same question Pelion asked her before. Why do you seek Imperial favor? As she responds, her theme enters. are fading into memory. Yes, I seek power to ensure my anger gives me strength. And it is that strength that I offer the Empire. As Theron accepts her and reveals a portion of his fleet, his theme comes back. Now, personally, this relationship between Thrawn and Morgan and how it evolved from here and how they would have actually worked with each other, supported each other, and developed the close tie that they clearly have in Ahsoka could have been an entire story arc to itself for this show instead of a single episode that seems to simply add more questions than answers. But, I absolutely would love to know what all of you think as well. Was it interesting to see how Thrawn and Morgan began working together? What did you think about the fact that it was Morgan's idea for the TIE Defenders and not Thrawn's? Were you excited to see Thrawn again and to hear his theme? And would you want to see more of this relationship and this story explored? Tell me in the comments below what you think and consider checking out my Patreon page using the link in the description where you can help support this channel for as little as $1 a month or download PDFs and MP3s of projects as I complete them along with other perks at higher tiers. Please don't forget to like this video and subscribe to learn more about the music of a galaxy far, far away and as always, may the be with you.